specific question with constant coefficient. In this lecture, I am going to solve those questions in which we do not have any direct formula and we will use the general method for solving the particular integral. So, let us solve the following questions. So, the first question is to solve the problem say b square plus a square of y equal to if you use 1 then b square plus 1 of y equal to 10 ax. Then we can have another question as b square plus 1 of y equal to sec ax. Here we do not have any direct formula for the particular integral of these problems then we can find the particular integral of cot ax, the particular integral of cos of ax and let us solve one question out of these four questions to get its solution. So let us solve the first problem. So for the first problem solution, our auxiliary equation will be Let us re replace our d by m. So we will have m square plus 1 equal to 0. So your root of m will be plus minus i. So our complementary function will be c1 cos x plus c2 sin x as our real part is 0. So e power 0 x will be 1. And particular integral is 1 upon d square plus 1 of 10x. Now as we do not have any direct formula for 10x, so let us use the general method that means 1 upon d minus alpha of fx. So for that we need the linear factor of d square plus 1 and the linear factors are d plus i into d minus i of 10x and this is equal to 1 upon 2i and here we will have d minus i and minus d plus i of 10x. So here you can see that if you have the partial fraction then we will get this term and you can cross check it. This will be your d plus i and here we will get minus d plus i. So in the numerator we will get 2i. So this 2i will get this 2i. So we will get this term. So now let us find out or solve one part and we can get similarly the second part because we have to replace our i by minus i. Say so this is your first part and for the second part we have to replace our i by minus i. So because if you put i, if you replace i by minus i then we will get this term. So now let us assume the first part is i1 and the second part is i2 and say this is equation number 1. Now let us get, find out the values of i1 and i2. Let us, let us find out the values of i1 and i2. Now i1 equal to 1 from d minus i of 10x. Now we have a formula of 1 from d minus alpha of fx which was e to power alpha x the integration e to power minus alpha x into fx means 10x into dx. This is the formula for 1 from d minus alpha into fx which was your e for alpha x integrate e for minus alpha x into fx dx. Now if you replace the value of e for i theta as cos theta minus sin theta and 10x as sin x for cos x then we will get this term. Now this is equal to e for i x then cos upon cos will be your 1 so we will have sin x and here we will have sin x square x1 cos x dx so sin square theta can be written as 1 minus cos square theta And e to power ix, we will have sin x minus i, 1 for cos is sec x. Here we will have minus minus plus, so we will have cos for cos square from cos will be cos x. So 
we will get cos x into dx. So this is your minus i sec x and we will get plus i cos x. Now the integration of sin x is minus cos x. Integration of sec x is log sec x plus 10x and integration of cos x is sin x. So this is your i1. Here we have not used any constant of integration because we already have two constants in our CF. So there is no need to write another constant in the particular integral. So this is our I1 and for I2 we have to replace our I by minus I. Similarly, our I2 will be e for minus x, ix, just replace your I by minus I. Then we will have I log sec x plus 10x then minus i cos x so this is your i2 now your particular integral is 1 by 2i i1 minus i2 hence by 1 our pi will be 1 by 2i i1 minus i2 okay now if you subtract these two terms then our pi will be so this is equal to 1.2i now let us subtract term by term if you subtract from this term to this term then you can see that we will have plus cos x here now if you take minus sign common now if you take minus cos x common then in the back we will have e for i x minus e for minus i x so we have subtracted this term by this term so we will get e to the power minus cos x common so here we will have e to the power i x and h plus sign is here so we have taken minus sign common so we will get minus sign here then in the second term this as we are subtracting this term from this term so we get minus i log sec x plus x common so the second term will be minus i log sec x plus 10 x multiplied by then we will have e for i x plus e for minus i x and then the third term will be now this i think this is your sin x and not cos x again here we will have plus sign so i sin x will be common and in the bracket we will have e for i x plus e for minus i x now e to the power i theta minus e to the power minus i theta is equal to 2i sin theta. So the first term is 2i cos x sin x. And the second term is this is your 2 times cos x. So this will be your 2i cos x into log sec x plus 10x. Then the third term will be this is your 2 times cos x. And then we have i times sin x. So here you can see that the first term and third term is cancelled. This 2i and this 2i cancel. So we have minus cos log sec x plus 10x. So this is the our this is our particular integral. Therefore, your solution will be complementary function c1 cos x plus c2 sin x minus cos x into log sec x plus 10x. So this is the general solution of the problem. Similarly, we can solve the remaining three problems. Now let us solve another question. To solve the first problem is b square minus 3d plus 2 of y equal to sin e for x. Then the second one is d square. plus 3d plus 2y equal to e for e for x then third problem is d square minus 2d plus 2 of y equal to e for x 10x all these three problems are based on this general method so let us solve the problem number one 
or let us solve the first problem the third problem first so solution of the third problem here you consider your auxiliary equation is m square minus 2m plus 2 equal to 0 so our root will be m equal to minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so here we will get 2 plus minus 2i divided by 2 so this is your 1 plus minus i so your complementary function will be c1 cos x e power alpha alpha is 1 and c1 cos x plus c2 sin x and your pi will be 1 upon d square minus 2d plus 2 of e power x tan x and this can be written as 1 upon d minus 1 whole e square plus 1 of e power tan x e power x into tan x now if you take e power x common then we will have then our d will be replaced by d plus a a is your 1 because we have e power a x and in place of a we have 1 so this will be your d square plus 1 of tan x now now i am not solving the remaining part this is same as the previous question in the previous question we have already got the result for this particular integral and the result was and the result was the particular integral of this was by previous question by previous problem the solution of this was minus cos x into log sec x plus 10x so this was the solution of the this was the particular integral of this previous problem and here our a is 1 in the previous problem i think we have 10 ax in place of 10x so this is our complementary this is our particular integral and therefore your solution will be complementary function plus the particular integral the second problem and the first problem are almost similar to each other so let us solve first problem d square minus 3d plus 2 of y equal to sin e for x so your auxiliary equation is m square minus 3m plus 2 equal to 0 so from here our factor will be m minus 1 into m minus 2 so your m is 1 and 2 so complementary function will be c1 e for x plus c2 e for 2x so our pi is 1 upon d minus 1 into d minus 2 or the factor then we have sin e for x now we can have the partial fraction of this term so on the partial fraction we will get this term sin e for x you can cross check it we will get this term now again using the general method we will have this term as sin e for x then d minus 1 of sin e for x now this is your e for alpha alpha is 2 so this will be e for 2x and in the right we will have 1 upon d minus of alpha is equal to e for alpha x then in the bracket we will have e for minus alpha x so I think here we have a problem. This will be not minus 3, this will be a plus 3, only then we can solve this one. Otherwise, this e for x will be your e for minus x, not plus x. Let us write plus 3 here. If you write plus 3 here, then we will have then we will have minus 1 and minus 2 as roots. So this will be 0 minus x e for minus 2x. So we will have d plus 1, d plus 2. So d plus 1 will be here and d plus 2 is here. Now, now this will be your otherwise this question will otherwise we will not get any particular solution. We will like get solution in the terms of integration. Now this will be your e to power 1 upon d plus alpha is equal to e to power minus x. Then we will have e to power x and sin e to power x will be here. And similarly here we will get e for minus 2x and in the, in the back we will get e for 2x sin e to power x into dx so this will be our solution now 
if you put e for x as d then this e for x dx will be dt so here we have simply sin t and the integration of sin t will be minus cos t so here we get e for minus x into cos e for x we have already multiplied this is your if you take e for x as t then this will be e for x into dx which is your dt so we will get sin t and sin t means integration of sin t is minus cos t so this is your minus cos t and t is e for x Similarly, if you take e for x here, t here, then we will have e for x dx as dt. So this will be your t into sin t. If you take e for x as t, then one e for x into dx will be your dt. So we will have one more e for x and one more e for x means t. So we will get t into sin t, and the integration of t into sin t will be the integration of t into sin t will be the integration of t into sin t. is equal to now this will be your t integration of sin t will be minus cos t then we will have minus sin and integration of cos t will be sin t and this minus will be plus so we have minus t cos t plus sin t so minus t t means e for x cos e for x plus sin e for x this is your integration of this bracket now this is equal to Minus e to the power minus x cos e to the power x. This is your minus minus plus, and we will get e to the power minus x into cos e to the power x. And here we will get e to the power minus two x into sine e to the power x. Now this term is cancelled with this term, so we will get minus e to the power minus two x sine e to the power x. And your solution will be your final solution will be the sum of complementary function in particular integer. Now for the second part. Everything is common. Let us solve the second part. For the second part, here we have e to power e to power x. So CF will be common. And for the particular integer, this is your e to power e to power x, e to power e to power x. And here we have e to power e to power x. And again here we will have e to power e to power x. So all the steps up to this place are common. So let us remove this part. Now, on integration, this will be your e to the power minus x integration of e to the power x into e to the power e to the power x dx. Then here we will have e to the power minus two x again e to the power two x into e to the power e to the power x dx. So this is equal to. Now again, if you take e to the power x as t, then we will get e to the power x dx as dt. So this will be your e to the power t, and integration of e to the power t is e to the power x. And now for the second term, if you take e for x t, then one e for x dx will be dt. So we will get e for x, and as e for x is t, so this will be your t into e for t, and integration of t into e for t will be integration of t into e for t will be t into e for t. T means e for x. So e for x into e for e for x, then we will have e for e for x because if you Replace your e for x t, then this will be your e for one e for x into dx will be dt. So we will have one more e for x, and that is your t. So we will get t into e for t, and integration of t into e for t will be t into e for t minus difference of t and integration of e for t. So we will get this to get. So t means e for x, e for t means e for e for x minus e for t means e for e for x. So This is equal to e for minus x, e for e for x. Then this term will be minus e for minus x, e for e for x. So we'll have plus e for minus two x. Again, e for e for x. So this term is cancelled with this term. So we will have this term. And in the previous question, our answer was similar to this problem. We have we have got e for minus two x into sine e for x. So that was the solution of the previous problem.